How does Roy Underhill do it? Where else? First of all, a saw bench height should be customized to the woodworker. The top should be right below your kneecaps because your knee becomes your hold down when you're sawing. And if you're doing a big long rip cut, you don't want to be in an awkward position for like 10-15 minutes. Second, a saw bench has a handy dandy little split of some sort in the top to make rip cuts easier. Now, my particular bench is an adaptation of the traditional design. On one end, we do have something similar to a V, which is a feature of those traditional benches. It's designed to support smaller pieces for ripping without cutting into your bench. But it also makes a handy dandy little holding spot for things like frame and panel doors or stuff like that when you want to stand them on the end and plane down the top edge. A more modern design is the complete split top, which makes it easier to rip long boards without cutting into your bench. I like that design, but I also like the holding features of the older style. So I'm going to incorporate both into my bench. Who's going to stop me? Of course, this makes my bench a little bit longer than some of the others out there, but there's a reason for that too. You see, a lot of old-timey woodworking tasks are best done sitting down. And the shaving horse used to be the place where you did your tasks. The back of the shaving horse seat would have things like holes for bench hooks and all that stuff. But not every woodworker has room in his shop for a great big shaving horse. And if you don't make chairs, you're probably not going to use it anyway. So I decided to add those little features to my saw bench. You know what the best part is? You can make this whole thing with just a couple of 2x6s and one 2x4. It only costs like 10 bucks. For me, three feet is just about right. So I got some two by sixes and I cut a couple three foot chunks. I also cut four 19 inch long chunks. Why 19 inches? Well, it's because I took my ruler and I measured from the floor up to my kneecap and it turned out to be 19 inches, which I believe is the perfect kneecap height for an old timey woodworker. You should probably measure yours to be sure. Your two by sixes probably aren't very flat and every old timey woodworker knows just what to do with fat. Get out your hand plane and you get to work on them. You don't want any bows or twists or wanes or anything like that, but they don't have to be perfectly flat. Plus, I like to take it down enough that I can get rid of those rounded edges that make a two by eight look like a two by eight, know what I mean? Now we're gonna have to cut some dovetails, which I know can be a pretty scary thought for some woodworkers. Don't worry, I'm gonna walk you right through it. But if you need to take a minute, go psych yourself up, vomit, whatever it is you have to do, go take care of it now. I'm gonna head over to Pappy Nub's tool chest and grab a couple saws. We set our marking gauge to the thickness of our leg and mark all the way around the ends of the mating top piece. The traditional angle for a dovetail in softwood is one six which means you take your bevel gauge and you line it up on the one and the six on your carpenter square. Really, you don't have to use a bevel gauge to mark the angles on dovetails like these. If you've cut a few dovetails in the past, you could probably just eyeball the angle. But I still like to mark mine out. I do, however, eyeball the spacing because with only two tails per joint, it's pretty hard to mess that up. If you're new to dovetailing, this project is great because it's not a piece of fine furniture. There's no pressure to get them perfect. sharp chisels for dovetails, especially in softwood because a dull chisel is just going to mash it. And I like to carve a little shoulder to keep the chisel from pushing backward across the line as I chop, especially on my show side. Now this is why you can just eyeball the angles when you're cutting the tails, because even if you're not exact, you're custom cutting your pins to match those tails. So any errors are gonna be compensated for. 
The moment of truth always comes when it's time to put your joint together, and I bet you're dying to do it. But don't do it just yet. A dovetail always fits best the first time it's assembled, and you still have to cut the tails on the other ends of your top pieces, and we'll have some tenons on the other ends of the leg pieces, so rather than putting them all together and then taking them apart and back and forth and all that stuff, just hold your horses. I'm gonna go get a cold one, and be right back and we'll talk tenons. Normally, you'd set your gauge to the width of your mortising chisel, but we're gonna do things a little differently this time. Set your pins to an inch apart and your fence a quarter inch from the pins. We're gonna make our tenons two and a half inches long. So you can mark your shoulder first with uh, another marking gauge, or you can measure it out with the ruler and mark it off with the tri square. When I'm making any saw cut that I want to be right along the line like this, I always cut a little notch just like I did with the chisel on the dovetails. This creates a shoulder for your saw to start without skipping across the line. And if it's going to be a through tenon with a visible end, I also cut a groove all the way down the end grain. This gives me a crisp edge and helps the saw to track accurately since it will naturally want to follow the path of least resistance. To cut a tenon you want to angle the piece away from you so you have a good view of the line on this side of the board. As you cut, you want to follow that line while also keeping an eye on the line across the end grain until you get down to your shoulder. Then we flip the piece around in the vise and do the same thing on the other side. cut the shoulders we can use the same trick with the chisel or marking knife before we make our cut. It's also important with any cut to keep the saw perpendicular to the workpiece. You can do this very accurately with your eye if you just sight down the blade kind of looking at both sides of the plate at once and with your thumb against the plate that can help you guide the cut as well. These one inch wide tenons are going to fit into our feet and of course we're going to make our feet out of 18 inch long pieces of two by six. You're gonna need two of those, one for each foot. Now, most mortises are bored out and then chopped to square. But in this case, we're gonna do stuff a little bit differently. We're gonna cut half our mortise at a time. And I'm not talking about top half, bottom half. I'm talking about right half, left half. Now remember which legs are which because you want to keep all of your mating dovetails together and get the right legs on the right feet. So these are the two legs that go with this foot. I know I want them about an inch and a half apart so I'll use a 2 by 6 scrap as a spacer and I want this roughly centered on the foot. Now I can mark the sides of my half mortises. Some back saws come with depth stops. You can even make your own depth stop, which is actually a project that we'll probably do in a future episode. But this time, we're going to do it the hard way. We'll use a marking gauge to just mark a line where we want to stop cutting, and we'll be careful not to cross our lines. You want to mark that line half the thickness of the tenon. So in this case, it's a half inch. Now we want to cut a series of curves down to the lines we made with our marking gauges. This might be a little intimidating because you're afraid you're going to cross the line, but do it a lot like you did the tenon. Cut at an angle down to your line on one side, and then turn the board around and cut at an angle down to the line on the other side, and then cut out the middle. Do several curves about an inch apart, and then we're going to chop them up. Don't try splitting out all this waste at once. You'll end up splitting deeper than you want. Better to do like a third, and then do a little bit more, and then finish off at the line, than to split it out and ruin the whole project. Then you can smooth things out with a nice wide slick or a wide chisel or even a hand plane or if you're a real old timey woodworker you can use a skewed rabbit plane. Now it's time to rip it right down the middle so that we have two pieces that are two and a half inches wide. And by gluing our two halves together we have a delicious mortise sandwich. But hold the mayo and of course by mayo I mean glue because now is an opportunity to fix any mistakes that you might have made, specifically if your tenon is too thick. You can clean that baby up with the hand plane, get yourself a nice perfect fit, and then glue your two halves together. But don't glue the tenon into the mortise yet, Mr. Anxious. We'll get to that right after the feet dry overnight. 
We want this bench to be really stable, and the best way to do that is to draw bore these tenons. And to do that, it's not as intimidating as it sounds. In fact, it could be easier. Actually, it could be easier, but we're woodworkers. I mean, come on, suck it up. First thing you want to do is to drill your holes. Get yourself a drill bit about an eighth of an inch and decide where you want your pegs to be. I suggest two pegs for each tenon. Find a nice pretty place to put them and drill a one eighth inch hole right straight down through the outer surface of your foot. Then dry fit your tenons. Take that same drill bit and put it through the hole and just make a little mark on the end of each tenon. Pull your tenons out and the actual spot to bore your full size hole is not going to be where that little mark is, but about a sixteenth of an inch or maybe three thirty seconds below the mark. So get a drill bit to match your peg size. I recommend hardwood pegs because you're going to be pounded on the ends of these things and pine will probably just split on you. Drill your hole straight through your tenon. Do it on both of them. Then you're going to fit your tenons right back into your mortise, this time use glue, and sharpen yourself up a couple of pegs for each tenon. You want to sharpen them kind of like a pencil. Of course, you don't need a pencil sharpener in an old-timey workshop, you can just use a chisel. Then you're going to pound those babies right into your holes, and as you do, that point will find the little offset hole in the tenon, and force those tenons right down into a locked position, tighter than you could ever do it by hand. These babies are never coming apart. And now that we've started assembling, why stop now? Let's get our dovetails together. That's one good looking bench if I do say so myself. I spared you a couple of the construction details but I'll fill you in on them. That uh, little uh, piece that fills in that split top, that was just a 2x2. Two two. It's about 12 inches long and I just glued it in. I also drilled some 3 quarter inch holes in the top that uh, will fit bench hooks, things like that. Um, the position really isn't that important. I'll probably get working and wish I had one somewhere else and I'll just bore another hole. I also made some lateral supports out of some 2x4s. Now you can put this on any way you want. I just did another simple dovetail and these are actually the easiest dovetails you're ever going to do. You just cut the tail on the end of the 2x4 and uh, trace it on the edge of your 2x6 leg and chop out or cut your hole and then just chop it out and it goes really fast just be careful you don't split too much pop them in one on each side and that gives you a lot of um, protection against it racking from side to side motion this sucker is rock solid of course the best thing to do with one of these saw benches is just sit back on them sure beats sitting on that bench <laughs> 